Hello and welcome to Show Studios Autumn Winter 21 Menswear Roundup. I'm content editor Callum Knight and I'm digitally joined by our fabulous features editor, Hetty Malik. Hi. We are going to be talking about the menswear fashion week that we've just had. It has been a kind of controversial fashion week in a way. Um, London has gone, at least for the year, co-ed, meaning that normally we would be running around London from the 3rd of January um, to go see shows, but that has all been cancelled and we'll see the menswear along with the women's in February, which lots of people believe is a better system. It also calls into question the kind of need for a Milan or a Paris fashion week, especially when Milan's got such a small schedule now that it almost couldn't fill it itself. Paris does have a lot of menswear and kind of fully delivered on that, even though we'll get into it later. But yeah, I kind of just wanted to start off by asking you, Hetty, kind of your thoughts on menswear as a whole and the relevancy kind of of a men's week now, considering it's only it's not even been a decade since menswear got its own fashion week. I mean, I think on one, on one hand, there is this sense that, for me anyway, that I think menswear has become re a really exciting space, especially in the last five years or so. Um, I think that was really especially down to London and we've started to see it trickle into Milan and Paris. So on one side, I'm apprehensive about whether um, the lack of a menswear week in Milan or Paris might kill that. Um, and that thing of menswear being subsumed into women's wear. But I was actually really excited by some of the shows that were still on the schedule. Um, and I think it was a great, it's been a great couple of weeks of menswear. For sure. I mean, obviously we're all still at home. We are not traveling around the globe due to the pandemic. And I think brands are starting to get in, kind of get used to the way that this is going to be. Um, I've, presumably for, for a while, I don't, can't imagine a time when we are traveling again, at least not maybe in 2021. Um, so, you know, brands have gotten used to these to fashion films, to kind of doing behind the scenes documentaries, all these different kinds of ways of communicating fashion without physical attendance. But the kind of first thing that I wanted to dig down in is something that I've been kind of calling utilitarian luxury, which isn't necessarily a new term. Like, a, you know, brands that we'll talk about, like a cold wall leaks have really been pushing this for the last five years. Slightly derivative from the sportswear trend, which now feels out of date and kind of doesn't encompass what this is. But it's very much focused as we're working from home for, you know, as comfort. So we're seeing lots of references to dressing gowns, lots of focus on fabrics and kind of comforting fabrics, shearlings, pony skins, soft cottons, ribbed knitwear, um, and also weirdly a lot of shawl collars. The first collection I really wanted to get into, which was one of the first collections on the schedule as well, is Fendi, um, which Sylvia Fendi has kind of taken back just the reins of menswear after doing three seasons of looking after the couture and the women's wear as well. And this collection was a real success, but again, we saw lots of dressing gowns, lots of references to kind of working from home attire and kind of how the suit and menswear staples could be kind of readdressed, one, to be more useful in our everyday lives and also to comfort us in our everyday lives. Mm. That was a really unexpected collaboration with Noel Fielding, which worked really well, especially in those dressing coats you're talking about with the embroidery, and that was worked really well into kind of intarsia knits as well. Um, and I think that really kicked stuff, on, stuff off with Milan. And then as we kind of moved into Paris, we had Dior where Kim Jones was looking, it was kind of a real departure, I thought, and looking more at this kind of ceremonial man, but yet quite protective. So Kim Jones was really looking at um, taking men's silhouettes such as the kind of doublet throughout history but really modernizing them using kind of technical fabrics and really making kind of couture accessible to this um, to this kind of man but also approachable which I think really comes hand in hand with something being comforting. No for sure and his kind of success in that was looking kind of at slightly militaristic details and then adding them into couture and brooches, beautiful, quite modern embroideries, and then kind of putting on a puffer snow boot at the bottom. So it still felt really, as you say, accessible and quite warm and humble instead of this grandiose couture techniques, which can get kind of elusive and a bit out of touch. Uh, a Cold Wall actually is another one that obviously I just mentioned, who really, Samuel has really decided to split the A Cold Wall customer into two groups or, or to design for them in two groups. There's ACW, which is the tracksuits of things that we know and love that kind of launched him. Um, but obviously Samuel is an incredible designer and multi-talented designer. 
So there's the more sculptural pieces which he's bringing in as well as the tailoring. His move to Milan has really seen him kind of bolster up his tailoring offering, but without forgetting the kind of roots of the brand. So you have this weird hybrid that actually is very much looking at presenting comfort through padding and nylons and soft fabrics. But then now he's bringing in these men, these kind of traditional menswear techniques and tailoring, which is you know super exciting and creating, as I said, a really interesting hybrid. Uh, another hybrid brand is Elix, again, starting in a more sporty sector, but moving very far away from that now. The, they kind of closed off the um, Paris Fashion Week schedule last night. And this was really kind of a focus on color and texture and really trying to work out and look back to what Elix has meant in the past and how that can be re kind of addressed for today's audience. Mm. And I think then, you know, when we move back to Milan to Prada, um, Ruff Simmons and Mutu are doing their first menswear together, which was hotly anticipated, probably one of the most anticipated shows on the schedule. And again, this was really about how we feel in our clothes. Um, so we had these amazing knitted long johns, which kind of formed the kind of base to every outfit and really grounded it. And these kind of, I thought it was a, firstly a really great merger of um, Ruff and Mutu, a more kind of synonymous and slightly less picky that you could really feel the references um but we had all these kind of plush materials in this set which was by Rem Koolhaas and we really felt that come through in the collection as well we had a lot of kind of um you know almost patent um big jackets um and bomber jackets which is quite a rough signature um and these almost kind of garish color clashes so we had kind of purples and yellows um bright pinks um, and yeah, it was this really kind of great intertwining um, of the two kind of fashion leaders. For sure. I mean, there's been a good, I know we're trying to rush through kind of 12 days of fashion week really <laughs> fast, but I want to pause on Prada because as you say, it was such a thing. Everyone was kind of kind of calling it the make or break. The women's wear had been a bit of a preview, but it was a men's wear that people were really waiting for. There was, I mean, Mutra and Raph have always said this is a conversation, not a collaboration. Um, and that is really important when addressing this collection because a lot of people saw what they believe, what, what, what Raph's tropes in this and got very protective of the Prada they know and love. And um, I wanted to kind of address that a bit because the thing is, is a conversation, there's always one person who speaks more. And I think that is the important thing. We know what Mucha can do and Mucha knows what Mucha can do. Raph is a new person there. So in letting him kind of take the reins a bit more this time and then just coming in when she's when she's needed and being there Mucha's eye kind of refining it I think it's a really lovely mix and whilst he might be kind of outwardly leading this conversation that doesn't mean that Mucha's input is any less valid or any less important mm. and I said this in our prod review I think when you're talking about people like Raf and Mitra, I think we can get quite greedy um, and want something completely and utterly new. But actually, I think we need to appreciate that this is a conversation and it is a back and forth. Mm, for sure. And again, we're seeing here, as you said, those tight knits cocooning the body um, and really hugging it. And then these really broad, very expanded shoulders, straight down jackets that almost push people away. So it is very much about comfort and kind of personal space. The set, as you said, kind of really incredible, just juxtapositions of fabric and texture with no, obviously there was a concept, but the idea is there's no place or time, not inside or outside, just its own space to exist within, which is very much what it feels like reviewing Fashion Week from my sofa. <laughs> and it's kind of what we're all going through. We're all living these very sheltered realities where suddenly something will permeate through, um, which actually very easily leads me on to my next topic, which is the spoken word. Obviously, well, this season started the day after the inauguration of Joe Biden and the incredible performances that we had, including from the Young Poet Laureate. And actually, we saw a lot of spoken word on the, on the catwalk or in the fashion films. And I think this reflects, before we get into it, I think this really does reflect the idea of menswear slowing down from its kind of sportswear high pits, you know, logo mania, and really trying to take a second to think what can menswear mean? If we are fighting for a men's week, what do we need it for? I think quite literally as well, it's menswear really is trying to find its voice at the moment and is finding a new voice um, that isn't so pushed on it um, by kind of expectations in the industry. And I think Grace Wells Bourne is someone that's really kind of pioneered that um, she presented a film um, which was directed by Gina Edwards, who she's worked with before, 
and he um, did some spoken word poetry throughout, which was poetry by um, a St. Lucian poet called um, Derek Walcott. And it was incredibly moving. Um, and it was kind of closing this trilogy that Grace has been looking at, not only these connections between Britain and the Caribbean, but also really reframing the black male um, in kind of the kind of world of European luxury, but also kind of going outside those borders this season. Um, and that kind of element of spoken word really tied it together. And as I say, it was a really, really moving watch. Exactly. And, you know, again, with this very much whilst had this beautiful spoken word, the collection again was very, very protective, very quite honest fabrics, lots of shearling shawl collars, which we've been spotting throughout leathers, cashmeres, really, really soft, and then all grounded with a um, Adidas collab trainer that's kind of a bit scuffy and a bit at first jars your eye, but actually is the kind of thing you would wear to go to university in, which is a lot of what this collection was about. Uh, also, Ernest W. Baker, a young duo who are showing on the Paris schedule, who won the who were runners up in the LVMH prize, I'm sorry, presented a really lovely collection based on this kind of idea of dreams and lucid dreaming and kind of where you know when do you wake up is it still you know how do you feel and this was kind of started by a narration from their grandmother which kind of gave it a lovely personal note within the sinister <laughs> overtones of a nightmare it was sort of the perfect again introduction to the brand you know it's named after one of the designers reed's grandfather um, and his grandmother's kind of American, lovely American twang that opens this really reflects that kind of European Americana aesthetic, but also um, it's all about kind of the merger of Reed's and Inez's Portuguese and American backgrounds. So I thought that was a great introduction, especially if you haven't come across the brand before. For sure. And another brand that had a lot of spoken word in it. But before we get into that, it kind of brings us on to, I guess, our final and biggest topic of you know, the two weeks that we've just had, is fashion social reckoning, which has been going on since 2020, a lot to do with the murder of George Floyd, also environmental issues, um, and also a lot of questions about ownership that have come up. And no one really dealt with this better than Virgil at Louis Vuitton, who's had a very, a reasonably tumultuous ride and a hard time with fashion press. And I guess, the gen you know, the general fashion sphere online in general you know with a lot of accusations of copying um and you know just it, it hasn't been the easiest ride however this collection i think was not only an incredibly strong collection of garments but the message and fashion film within was so pertinent it was based around an art it was supposed to be like an art heist um, which is why you see Saul Williams um, in the first look carrying a Louis Vuitton kind of brief, briefcase that's handcuffed to him. Um, but actually it's about the transference of ideas and how in the end we're all being influenced by the same things and how can anyone take one ownership of that idea. And one of the lines which I've written down was the world is here for our taking because it takes so much from us which I think is really pertinent to this collection. You know Virgil was taking these kind of archetypal characters and uniforms and kind of reshaping them in different fabrics and different colours and kind of playing with this idea of um, kind of unconscious bias and what we assume when we see what, so how someone is dressed and kind of presenting this idea that, you know, none of these ideas actually belong to anyone, none of them are owned by anyone. And that I think it was a real message of um, encouraging people to kind of take the world as their own, especially if you're from a marginalised community. For sure. And we also saw really great examples of playing with, uh, I guess, identifiers of culture. So we saw those Kente cloth kind of woven alongside Scottish tartans to kind of start playing with these notions of ownership and really, you know, and this global community that we are in or like it or not, the world is going towards. And I, it was one of those moments where, you know, people that I follow who don't like fashion or don't care about fashion, they saw this as had a huge reverberation across the creative communities at large, not just the fashion community, and has really cemented Virgil's place as one of the voices of our generation. You know, he's just because he started doing Off-White and Bean Trill, which has often been used against him in terms of kind of dis discrediting him and not coming from a fashion background. This has, as I say, cemented him as 
the one one of the ones to you know one of the ones to always be looking at each season because what he is speaking about is so pertinent and his way to communicate that through clothing through art direction through set through structure through collaborations is he's a real renaissance man i'll say that <laughs> well said um kind of on the opposite side we had rick owens looking at male rage with a soundtrack i can't remember who did it now i wish i could um, that basically just screamed, I want to kill somebody, and really was almost distressing in its show or its study of this male aggression that Rick was quoted to say he was studying his own male aggression. However, in considering the goings on in the world, it can also be linked to lots of things that were going on in the press end of last year, beginning of this year. It was certainly felt he was looking at this religious idea of kind of a final reckoning. And I certainly think that that came through in the collection. You know, we had these kind of um, Tyler opened in these kind of, as you call them, whitey tighties. And, but, you know, in this very fierce walk with this massive kind of puffer coat, and that was the kind of attitude which run through, ran through the whole collection. And it was about this kind of masculinity, almost kind of bursting at the seams, um, with very, a very traditional masculinity. And I think, as you say, that's very, very pertinent to the events, especially of this year. And again, actually, we saw skin tight leather bodysuits hugging the form and then huge billowing nylon puffers or double cashmere kind of knits that really, again, play with this idea of comforting the body, hiding it away um, or and, you know, expelling other people from your personal space. and. The finale, which was it was shown in Venice, live stream from Venice, where all the models walked up church steps and stood there, really kind of made you think about whether these people were aggressors or protectors and what they believed themselves, you know, these characters, where did they think they fit into this narrative? So again, so again, we're looking at ownership, we're looking at kind of the power of a group and of, of these messages. A smaller collection, which some of you may not have seen, was Namacheco, which I want to kind of pause on briefly. Through wigs quite literally covering the eyes, lots of kind of furs, mottled colours, a lot darker for Namacheco in terms of colour palette and in theme, I think. This, I think, was really pertinent, especially because to me anyway, when I saw this, I read it very much as this idea that, you know, everyone's in lockdown at the moment and a lot of people have realised that pace of life before that we weren't really living at all. And it's this idea of seeing a new reality and having to decide which one you're gonna, whether you're gonna go back to the past or maybe take a quite scary leap into the future, which is a great message, I think, not just for fashion, but for the world at large, if you will. <laughs> one brand I wanna to touch on, and we've got a lot of, you know, we've got a lot of mixed opinions on this was Vetmon as well, who is quite off, who've made a career and made a brand out of commenting on social norms, social structures. Um, and kind of taking the piss out of them. Obviously, they haven't had Demna there for this is their second season without Demna. Um, and it's now being designed by the collective again. And they released 165 looks, which personally feels extremely too large, especially for a collection that prompt that over promised and under delivered, I would say. Mm, and I, you know, Vetamont, there is this whole debate surrounding the brand of whether they've lost their kind of oomph over the last few years, especially since Demna left. And, you know, if you'd actually refined this collection and distilled it a bit, there are some messages and some great designs that you could pull out of that. But I think not only did it get lost in 165 looks, like, which is insane, but, you know, this kind of message of irony, which Vetmont kind of are based on, it's a bit like a broken record. So it lost the impact that it possibly could, would have had a few years ago. Sure. And I mean, it, whilst it's not technically autumn into 21, I want to kind of end on Martine Rose's What We Do All Day show, which was a reinterpretation of her Spring Summer 21 collection. Martine Rose, known for her kind of community shows, whether it's showing in um, indoor markets or on cul-de-sacs in London, took her collection digital this season into a kind of 3D rendered, slightly cell block slash um, council housing project space and invited the public to come and look and see 24 people and what they did all day and how we're living in lockdown starred by Tamara Rothstein it was for Tamara and Martine who quite normally take things to the extreme they held back on styling and actually let the people really shine through and personally I feel that this was such a great 
way of showing what Martine's about and what fashion can be about and really bringing people together, whether we're, you know, here or at home, wherever we are, you know, there's a real need to connect with people. That's what fashion is. Fashion is nothing without its community. 100%. And that show did an incredible job of creating this global community, whilst at the same time doing that by focusing on the individual, both the individual watching the show and experiencing it, but also all the individuals in these rooms. I mean, sometimes there were kind of couples and stuff, but it was all about individuals, how they're living in you know, their bedrooms, their kitchens, doing everyday stuff, which you, the viewer, can 100% relate to in lockdown as well. And also how these people are wearing Martine Rose. That's what was so great about it, seeing people in all corners of the world living their daily lives wearing Martine Rose. Um, and I thought it was the most approachable, but also kind of mesmerising menswear show that I've seen in a long time. I completely agree. And, you know, whether menswear become menswear week becomes a thing of the past, the menswear community is only growing. You know, it is the large. I think it's the largest expanding sector within the fashion industry. So, what you know, however it's presented, whether it's digital, physical, has its own week tacked onto women's wear. It's definitely not going to be the last we're hearing of these designers, and it's only going to get bigger. And it's really finding its voice. Mm, and it, it's a softer voice. It's a. It's a it's a more genteel and more understanding. And as this industry, as this sector of the industry grows, it's, as we say, we're only gonna be hearing more from it. Um, that's all from us, but make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have couture panels on the way. Women's wear is just around the corner. Um, if you haven't, go to our collections pages and check out all these shows in full because they are all kind of great examples of fashion at its finest and you know i think if this week has shown us anything or two weeks have shown us anything it doesn't matter if we're together or far apart you know this community is something that is going to keep thriving yeah i think menswear is definitely the most exciting area in fashion right now so for sure but well, thanks for joining me hetty and thank you everyone for watching we will be back very soon bye <laughs>